All right, we're here at the soft rep hangar for Inside the Team Room Navy SEALs. I'm here with my teammates Drago, Shane Hyatt, Mike Ritland, and we're going to get started. So we started off a tradition in the team room of having a toast. Uh, I think we're going to raise a glass to our fallen soft brother. So cheers, fellas. Ah, it's... Oh, man. Good Why'd stuff. I get the big glass? All right, uh, first thing I want to talk about is just, we all had these crazy stories about how we joined the Navy and the military, and I know, Mike, you and I had a laugh about your, your uh, Army, Army buddy, and you almost considered going in the Ranger Regiment, but <clears throat> what do you guys, we'll start with you, I guess. Like what? Yeah, so, um, you know, I grew up with a, with a real, you know, patriotic pro-military family, both my uh, grandfathers were in World War II. One was in the Navy, one was in the Army. And, um, you know, growing up, I, I had just a, a lot of influence from, from both of them, specifically my, uh, my mom's dad that was in the, in the Navy. And uh, just, you know, hearing him talk about, uh, you know, just the, the different things that they did in World War II. And he was on a, on a minesweeper in a fleet of 98, uh, and two of them came back, you know, and, and he was obviously on one of them. And so, he didn't talk a whole lot about it, but uh, it, it had an impact. And, and my best friend growing up, you know, we were both, uh, you know, got into trouble the same way a lot of kids do. You know, we'd shoot guns and go hiking and camping and, uh, you know, egging cars and stupid shit like that. But, uh, you know, we had, had from an, a very early age kind of a, just a, a direction that we, we both wanted to, to do something different, you know, uh, special operations wise. And, and uh, we kind of decided we were going to be rangers. And uh, when I told my parents about it, my mom about shit herself. She was like, "You're not, you're not going into the, you're not going into the army like to be a ranger." And she's like, "You know, your grandfather was in the navy, and and uh, you know, if if you're hell bent on on joining the service, you know, why don't you you know join the navy like uh, like he did?" And uh, so I was like, "All right, you know." So I'd end up doing the same shit anyway. But uh, you, you know, join it to be in the to go to right to bud like that was the plan. Uh, I well, so I I did a um, it was kind of the, the same spiel that probably all recruiters do you know pick pick a rate and then you know you can go to buds after that and so i looked at the list and uh, i originally signed up to be a corpsman or wanted to be a corpsman but uh at the dude, time i would not want you as yeah. my fucking corpsman man. <laughs> that's that's sorry, dude. yeah well there's the two types he's like, good with a needle yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. No, smooth. Smooth. I got hold still yeah. I got you move that wasn't me yeah <laughs> but uh yeah so um but at the time, you know, they were real heavy on corpsmen, and so they basically said, you know, there's no, no spots available. So um, I said, okay, well, you know, out of the list, what, what else is available? And intelligence specialist was on there, and I read the little five-sentence paragraph on what that was, and I was like, well, that sounds pretty cool, you know. Um, so I signed up for that. I went to boot camp and, and um, you know, passed the, the BUDS test and uh, started working out. I, I actually almost didn't go. Um, when I was getting ready to graduate A school, uh, they they gave us our list of orders, and I was actually uh, stationed to the USS Constellation. I was like, wow. "What the fuck is this?" I was like, "I, I have a buds packet." <laughs> USS Never Dog. Yeah, and here we so come. They, they were like, uh, "They were like, no, we, we never received your buds packet." I was like, "You gotta be shitting me!" It's like a week before we graduate, so I went to SEAL Team Two. <laughs> Welcome to the Navy. Yeah. yeah. Never again volunteer Smooth. yourself. Uh, so I, uh, I I went to SEAL Team Two to their quarter deck, and it was like a Friday afternoon, and uh, there was two guys standing on the quarter deck, and I had an Iowa Hawkeye sweatshirt on. And I walk in there and I got my little green buds packet and, and they're like, who's this fucking guy, you know? It looks like he's 12 years old. And, and you did. You can just tell, like, these guys are looking at me like this fucking clown, you know? Um, I remember when you couldn't even drink yeah. the team. We were in new guys at Team 3. Yeah, I mean, you guys would go out and I, I was watching <laughs> weapons. Designated driver. I mean, yeah, designated yeah. weapons watch. Yeah, it pays to be 18, 19 in a SEAL platoon, but... Um, but anyway, so the, oh, what, what are the odds? This guy's like, you from Iowa? I was like, yeah. And I uh, said, you know, where from? I said, Waterloo. He's like, you got to be shitting me. Well, it turns out one of these two guys is from my hometown. If it hadn't been for that, I'm almost positive I would have never gone to Bud's because he was like, all right, give me your packet. 
you know, he ran it up the dive motivator on the East Coast at the time and, and uh, managed to somehow make it happen. But, you know, he pulled me aside. He's like, don't you fucking, don't you embarrass our hometown. He's like, I'm the only guy that's made it. He's like, you, you better fucking fuck make this it. Up. And, of course, I'm like, yeah, I'll, okay. As opposed, you got the funny story about Dick Marcinko. Oh, yeah. Go that, you got to tell that one. So uh, in, in A school in Virginia Beach, um, there was a book Classic. signing. There was a book signing with Dick Marcenko, James Patches Watson, and Carlos Hathcock at some little mom and pop fucking bookstore. <laughs> so I'm in A school. I, I walk up there with my copy of fucking Rogue Warrior, and he looks at me and he's like, "What's your fucking story?" You know, I was like, oh, "I'm going to Buds." He's like, "Sure you are." <laughs> yeah, you know, he's like, sure. Just a classic fucking Dick Marcenko line. He looks at me like this fucking guy. And uh, he's like, what class are you going to be in? I said, uh, two, I'm slated for 214. He's like, you mean DD 214? You're going to fucking quit. He's like, you're not going to make it. And uh, at, what's funny. DD. That's perfect. Yeah. The, the beauty, like at the time, I had no fucking idea what, what he was even talking about. I was like, the joke. Uh, this is like the founder okay. of Team Sick. Yeah. Like this guy you look up to, and, and he's basically clowning telling you, yeah. clowning yeah. you at the book, the at his book sign. Yeah. Yeah. You bought the fucking book, yeah. Yeah. and now I, I he's just still giving you shit. I'm, an I'm, I'm aspiring to be, you know, just like him or whatever. And uh, yeah, the first word is like, you're not gonna fucking make it. And he like throws the, book. <laughs> and that's what he wrote <laughs> in my the book. book at him, yeah. dude. He like throws the fucking book at me. He's like, next, you know, like just <laughs> give me a call when you quit. It's like that uh, movie, The Christmas Story, where the kid finally gets to Santa Claus. He's like. Yeah. And he's froze up. He's like, Santa just kicks him down the <laughs> side. Yeah, get out of here. Bad Santa, maybe. But, oh, man. Yeah. That's so, good stuff. Uh, but yeah, obviously went to, ended up making it through, or, or making it to Buds, and then graduating with, with you. But uh, yeah, what, that's what about you, Shane? Uh, mine was a little different. I'm, as you guys all know, I grew up white trash in New Mexico, landlocked. <laughs> yeah, I did. Know it well. I was, know uh, it well. <laughs> yeah. We spent a little bit of time together. Yeah, yeah, I grew time. up on a sailboat, which is kind of like being in, living in a trailer that's in like, California. That's like white trash on the water. Yeah. Yeah. In California, yeah, that's, that's, a, that's our version of the trailer yeah. part. But, uh, yeah. I, uh, had a, I had a jackass stepdad, and uh, he wasn't around much, but I had a, a neighbor who kind of took me as a father figure. He was a uh, he bow hunted and I worked with him wiring houses and shit. I didn't know what I wanted to do. I, my older brother he was took out. me in late at night. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Ta- yeah. Taught me how to wrestle. Yeah, we were, we, were, we were close. We were Spartans. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I wired houses with the guy and I was around him for I don't know a couple three years in high school and I didn't know what I wanted to do. But my older brother was still fucking pumping gas at gas station when I graduated high school. I was like, fuck, I can't stay here. I got to do something. Yeah. I had no way out of the house. We weren't with money. I, I wasn't going to go to college. I'm like, well, shit, I guess I'll go in the military. And he had been, uh, he was a helicopter pilot in the Navy during the NOM years. And uh, he kind of, he reversed psychology. You know, he, he, he dicked with me because we were friends. He's like, well, he's like, look, if you're going to go in the military, you ought to go in the Navy because it'll give you the best opportunity for travel and whatnot. And, and it's better than the other, than the grunt forces. And, uh, he said, but if you're going to do it, he said, there's this group, you know, they're Navy SEALs and they're fucking batshit crazy and you don't want to do that. Whatever you do, you want to stay away from <laughs> yeah. that. But he said, you're already wiring houses. They've got electrical in the Navy, so you should go in the Navy and be an electrician. I'm like, okay, well, when I went in, it was the late 80s. There wasn't any Navy SEAL books or Navy SEAL movies or none of that shit. Nobody knew anything. My, uh, my recruiter, too, has credit as opposed to lying to me and saying, you can do this. He's like, I don't know a fucking thing about it. Because uh, I asked, he said, look, here, here's what I know. When you go to boot camp, sometime during the first week, they'll show you a movie for diving, EOD, rescue and SEALs, swimmer. and rescue swimmer, and they'll say, you know, who wants to volunteer for this? And if you say yes, then they'll check your ASVAB scores. And I said, I can tell you your ASVAB scores make the mark. And then from there, it's up to you. You know, do what they tell you to do, take the test, and do whatever. And so... I joined uh, my junior year in high school, you know, got the co-sign with my mom. She's like, all right, good luck. And uh, I graduated like a month and a half later. I flew to boot camp. First time I'd ever been on a plane. <laughs> I mean, I hadn't been out of the state. That's crazy. And uh, so I flew to Great Lakes and uh, same, you know, they showed the video and I'll do that. And uh, week four of boot camp, they took us in and, you know, took us to do the physical test. And I was a swimmer in high school, so the swimming, the pull-ups, the push-ups, all that shit was no big deal, but I'd never run. Like, at that point, I'd run 600 yards. It was the farthest I'd ever run in a row. And we're walking out to do the run, and there's this big EOD guy giving the test, and I was like, look, I, I don't think I can pass this. 
That's the spirit. Yeah, well, yeah, <laughs> like, I honestly, Way I, didn't show up, I had no fucking yeah. idea. You know me. I'm a runner. Not with that attitude. Yeah. But he says, he says, don't worry about it. He says, I'll, I'll work you through it. And every lap, he's like, you're a failure. You're not going to make it. You're a failure. You're not going to make it. And I end up passing and, and fucking throwing up and the whole deal. And went through A school, uh, checked into Bud's, and had stress fracture, you know, stress fractures and shin splints and shit. And so I rolled a class, I didn't class up with my original class, I should have been in uh, 163, and they held me from class up. And so I classed 164 and then just went through. But uh, w without the guy, you know, without my neighbor talking... 164, the hardest class in the history. Yeah, yeah. yeah I don't know about <laughs> all that. Training. It sucked. It sucks yeah. like all of them. Yeah, it's funny. You, you guys laugh, you know, it's easier now than it used to be. I went as an instructor and worked a few hell weeks. It ain't any easier because it's still us putting guys through. I, I might I have to the, work with you someday. You're not going to make it. I thought the same thing, and I worked one hell week yeah. when I was an instructor at the sniper program, and I was blown away yeah. like with how uh, yeah. tough it was. I, I worked, they're, they're holding the, I I worked yeah. one holding with the Rob line. Rob Byford. He's the first phase officer. I was like, oh, hey, yeah. Rob, I want the fucking balls to 8 a.m. <laughs> He's like, you want the, the hard shift? I was like, fuck yeah, dude. On Wednesday, I was like, hey, Rob, can I take the rest of the week off? He says, fuck no, yeah. you're in. Yeah, I'm like, I've run like 30 miles this week, dude, as an instructor. What the fuck? So the hell week just so <laughs> does, you don't know, divided into three shifts. Yeah. Of eight three eight-hour eight shifts. shifts and... So you get fresh instructors every eight, eight hours, and it's just they bring the pain. Like well, I mean, nobody I, wants to be on that. Like I, they know the pain is coming on yeah. that midnight to eight. Well, I, I remember working. I, I worked a, a number of hell weeks as an instructor, and uh, I remember the, the first couple were an absolute eye opener. Yeah. I mean, I, I remember thinking, I was like, Jesus Christ. I, I got the class leader to quit. quit. Yeah. Oh, shit. He was a fleet lieutenant. Yeah, I mean, I, I was. I told him I was like, I was on the O course. I said, Sir. Right now, these guys wouldn't follow you into a hot tub full of four naked strippers. Like, that's how bad like but your yeah, leadership is. It's in a different, it gives you a different perspective too. As yeah. an it, when you go it is. Training, training, as you in, you out. It's like oh fuck, yeah. I'm, I'm, I've, I've done it. I remember. But then yeah. when you look at it, it actually also makes you respect even more. I think this because now you see yeah. these kids putting out all yeah. this shit yeah. Yeah. and making through it. For me, it was really, real, you say, eye open up. Yeah, I, I, I remember when I, uh, when I finished my first shift after breakout, um, I rolled right into the shift, which, you know, it's an extra mm -hmm. long one or whatever, but at the end of it, I was like, fuck, I gotta be back when? It's yeah. like, shit, I need like two days off. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and they're like, no, you gotta be back in 14 hours, you know, it's like, holy shit. Yeah, just to, uh, just to freaking recover. I mean, yeah. I, I couldn't believe, I was so smoked. Yeah. But I think it's because you put so much effort into yeah. it as an instructor. But you, that's you, the other you try thing. to keep that level yeah. of intensity yeah. at, at a maximum the whole time. Well, you know? I remember so. being in Hell Week and having an instructor, you know, be like, dude, you think this is bad? It sucks way worse than the teams. Like, oh, it yeah. sucks being an instructor right now. And yeah. he was working the balls to 8 a.m. <laughs> shift. And I'm like, this guy's just fucking with me. No. He's yeah, trying yeah. to get in my head. And then, and then I work a shift. I'm like, I remember that dude wasn't fucking lying. He yeah. didn't want to be at work right now. <laughs> yeah. Like, that yeah. shit sucked. Yeah. Yeah, it ain't uh, easier. I, I used to tell the guys to, uh, in, in bots, that, uh, my, to my students, just look to your left, look to your right, look at these guys around. Just, just remember it, because a few years down the road, some of these guys will not be around. They, they, they won't be here. Uh, and you're not alone mm -hmm. suffering either. Yeah. You're all suffering together. You